Hey, <coughs> you, ha, ha, this is Flash somebody. In a perfect world, on Tuesday night, my night, the, uh, what is this? This is the 29th of January, 19. No, wait, not 19. Two. <laughs> two, zero, one, nine. I was reading the clock at 7 o'clock, and that's 1900. Anyway. Starting out with a blooper, but uh, we've had some hardware difficulties. Uh, started a couple of weeks ago, and people's equipment was starting to malfunction during live shows. And the last show that I did, where I, I had a bad result, was the tu this Tuesday in a Perfect World show, and uh, my equipment died halfway through the show. So. Uh, get started tonight saying hi to the reallibertymedia.com group out there in radio land and uh, say hey to Grim hey thanks a lot Grim I, I, I'm i just having the, the hardest time uh, changing over from you know simple windows easy to the Linux system which is just a little bit more difficult and I guess I just got lazy and I can't seem to, in my memory, remember what I did the last time. It's not catching, so i got to write more complete notes <laughs> and leave Grim alone before I go on the air. But it's a good thing it's not every fucking day, huh? And Anyway, we're uh, at reallibertymedia.com and we got hanging out the bar and the bots and the bodies are barman. Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chelsea, Doni, Chloe, Eshlan, <coughs> me, Graham Z, hey Grammy, uh, I B Don C, J Dread, Master Brow, Poxified, Poxophone, Rain, R L M Luke, Rob Works, Bubbler, uh, Trust Number One. Vinny, hey Vinny, uh, DC in brackets, <laughs> I don't know how to say that now, I have to pay attention to somebody else when they do it, Beetle, hey Cirque, Circles here, uh, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy Gromit, Java Doctor 2, J's, Nines, J's, Cozy, Moom, Nensen Dubois and uh, I'm on the line it says perfectly and uh, I opened up two of them I guess I didn't close one of them eh Poxahome Ponsas Sock Puppet Skittle the new bot Uno and the Phantom uh, so if you want to chitter chatter those folks are available for your typing amusement on the reallibertymedia.com chat hmm Sometimes it gets a little fiery in the chat room. <laughs> People are all, you know, winterized right now. I think, anyway. We're all stuck in the freaking house because it's, in some places, it's so cold, it's unbearable to be out there. And in places like where I live, it's just, it's not unbearable, it's just not my thing. I'm from the desert and shit. I didn't see snow until I was a teenager. <laughs> and I didn't live in snow until I was in my 20s. So, if there's anything you'll get out of me, it's I could do fine without the damn uh, snow. doesn't do nothing for me. Now, I know other people love the snow. But they're always complaining because they got to push this shit out of the way. And, and then they try to put it on me. You know, I didn't want it to snow. Why do I got to clean it up? <laughs> I'm Jewish, damn it. I got a certificate. Anyway. So on this Tuesday evening in Denmark, in a perfect world, I'm going to try to continue where I left off because uh, the last... Oh boy, this gets, the story gets worse. The last in a perfect world I did, I did everything right with help, but when it came to hit the record button, I didn't seem to do that in the right order. So hopefully tonight, tell me if, uh, I guess somebody would have said, oh, Grimner says, I hear Flash. Okay, there we go. That's good enough for me. I, uh, 
it helps, especially with all these technical breakdowns lately. And I had a theory on this. I don't think people are going to really take it too seriously. But if I was in the manufacturing business and I had a herd of sheep like the ones available with the Internet crowd that know how to pay for things, they don't know how to do anything else, but they know how to pay for things. And then there's the rest of us that we get what we can afford to make things happen. Because we're not filthy rich. You know, things have to, they got to last. Well, there's enough rich people that can just afford to, to replace and pay and all this other crap. And then it comes down to us. And I, I was wondering if the manufacturer didn't do updates that require, you know, it cuts this off. You can't use this anymore, but you can use that, but not tell you. you got to find out. You know, like the Kennedy thing, or maybe 9-11, or banking, <coughs> politics, religion. You know, the usual suspects in the game. Uh-oh, they're making up words on the uh, reallibertymedia.chat to throw off the Mexican in me. I don't know what circumcertified is, but wow, that sounds painful, you know. But oh yeah, I was making a joke. I see, because I'm ahead on the and the chat comes. Okay, yeah, the uh, <laughs> I got a certificate. They call it a birth certificate, you know. And on that birth certificate is information that these other entities they read it and they decipher it in their own special way, according to names and relatives that are on the document and all that kind of crap and put you in some kind of group so you won't you know mix with the other people you know because if you're white you're going to be with white people and if you're black you're going to be with black people that's kind of how things seem to work and then there was a few renegades that went and mixed with all the other ones right and uh, it's not it wasn't as popular. I'm a product of a mixed, you know, countries. Two different countries met in England, American in England, English in England, and uh, here I am. But I was born in California. Hmm. Now, how do you account for that? Toss of the coin? I don't know. What made my parents decide to stay in America rather than to uh, start out in England? They would have probably been better off if they would have stayed in England financially. Things were uh, things were destroyed in America before England, and and by the time they, you know, matured out of England and got up north, by then it by that point it didn't matter. They were away from the city life, so it was kind of it was a good way to do it. Anyway, so by some freak of life, or I don't know, nature seemed to follow in my parents' footsteps and I ended up in, in, in Scotland for a while and now in Denmark. And it's really sad that <coughs> daily the horror stories I read about home and France and every fucking where there's problems Venezuela's on fire now and all the armchair quarterbacks are all predicting the future and know what's going to happen. <coughs> They know the cause, they know the effect, they know the results, and wow, man, I've seen this movie so many times, I could jump in here with a very sensible opinion, but history proves that everything that we believe in the beginning always comes out to be bullshit at the end. So, what does Vinny say? Guard your words, you know, watch watch what you commit yourself to, because the shit is getting more serious, you know, I see certain people writing crap about uh, both the reality and the fantasy of the uh, the camps in America. Well, America's done it before. And they pulled off getting involved in a couple of world wars by subversion and misdirection and boldface lies. So they're not a trustworthy source of knowledge. You know, whatever you hear from the government don't listen to it. And I mean, unless you're, uh, unless you support it, which puts me in that 
well, I'm not American anymore, so to speak. I don't live there. So whatever I am doesn't have fuck all to do with America at this point in my life. I'm completely severed and free, except for my willing participation on the radio and in the uh, chat rooms. They're basically English-speaking, so you're going to get mostly Americans. couple of Canadians, oh, a stray Aussie or two, and occasionally a Mexican that speaks English, like Jose, that guy Vinny introduced me to, that, boy, he didn't like me, he thought um, I had white privilege, or, I don't know what all that shit's about, I've been white my whole fucking life, and I'll tell you this, that had nothing to do with anything that I ever did what color I was never seemed to matter it was always about the finished product of the thing I was doing whether it be a, a hobby or a job or whatever you know the results were what mattered not the player so there's two worlds there's the one I lived in and the one I still live in and then there's this world I read about every day and that world is a shit hole oh man there's the people that live in that world believe in authorita. You know, that's what I'm going to use to lead me back into where I left off. The last In a Perfect World that got actually got recorded and aired properly. Hmm. So what I was ranting on the last time was I believe the cop, and this is from experience of living a life where I met a cop at an early age and my memories of this man are horrible because he was a hypocrite and a, a liar there was nothing honest about him and I and he was still a pot smoker didn't stop him from smoking pot okay but he never smoked enough to actually take a look at how he behaved you know what he did for a living and <clears throat> And it gives potheads a bad name for somebody that's uh, a sociopath to be involved in the pot world because you're going to get them, you know. And who's going to be noticed? <laughs> Nobody notices anything good that goes on in life. They only notice all the negative shit. Oh, I fell and broke my leg. Oh, my car got hit by a truck. Oh, this. Oh, the weather sucks. Oh, something. Well, you come in the room and say, hey, yeah, I got a big box of chocolate and, uh, you know, a, what, a jet ski because I'm alive. My partner just uh, gave it to me. And people just don't. That's not good news to them. They, uh, I think that we've all just been beaten down so much over the years <laughs> that when you hear something good, the first thing your brain goes to is that's not true. That's bullshit. Everybody's miserable. So what are you talking about? Now, I don't think everybody's miserable. I think a few people truly are. And when water seeks its own level, so, you know, the more bullshit you got coming in, the more bullshit you got. So, you either you, uh, you join in the bullshit and you play along, or you cut the bullshit off completely. And there's no real you know we've been given this all all these choices we have in life and no we don't we don't have infinite choice about nothing you, usually you got two choices and if you're lucky unless you're married and then you got to ask your wife <laughs> right honey <laughs> you know cuz in a perfect world what would people do in a perfect world I guess they get along better. But anyway, my rant about the police, I believe from experience and from looking on to the game for all these years that to be a cop, you have to be a certain kind of slippery, slimy, sluggy shitbag. Because that kind of uh, job requirement today, especially now, what it entails a man to do to a total stranger for reasons I don't I cannot explain like the the thing w that we were talking about 
was a 65 year old woman got pulled over and her and her husband or what have you <clears throat> and ended up in jail for three months because of one of these bogus police check things they're checking for drugs so oh, she had drugs it was uh, uh, cotton candy in a bag mm. so think about the slimy fucking piece of shit that's got to go to work and do that to somebody and then be proven wrong after he does it now how does he ever go back to that job as, you know, again and do what and to who he's already proven he can't be trusted if he goes back to work he's proven he doesn't really care about them he cares about the job well take the job away from him and see what happens he's a crook that's the whole point of this whole game And they've used movies and entertainment and celebrity and politics. Why do you guys think our politics are run on lies and fabrication and deception? Because we allow it. People don't gather and say, you know, oh, hey, let's do it the right way. No, they beg for permission. Oh, please, Mr. Scotus. Oh, please. Where does that ever go? And, and if you listen to the the way that, that SCOTUS runs things, it hears certain cases. <laughs> when it feels like dealing with a problem because the problem might be too controversial, well, nah, they don't want to do that. Because then they'd have to make a decision. And then people would be unhappy. So it, it's a it's a paper game. And they tell you shit and half of us never hear the truth about the shit we are told like uh, what was that one link I keep putting up about the police have no duty according to SCOTUS to protect the citizen none and beside that think about this if 90% of your population are citizen and the other 10% aren't citizen hmm think about if your job required you to go protect whoever it was and they weren't even a citizen well why are you protecting them that's not your job is it <laughs> let's let's get into the details of the paperwork here and let's be realistic and instead of armchair fucking quarterbacks that know what happened and they saw the play I mean, yeah whatever look at the results around you now my results around me gave me no police activity they don't reside in the town I live in when they come through they're polite they're nice people my history shows me wherever there's police there's problems now I could be insinuating that American police are especially nasty above every other police I've ever encountered no I'm not, I'm not implying that I'm saying exactly that the police in America are the absolute worst I've ever encountered in any situation. And I've encountered English and Scottish uh, and Danish. And none of the other three were intrusive or rude or patronizing. They weren't insulting me because of the way I looked or show me this. They just smile and walk by you. Don't even know you're there. But in America, you got a dollar sign on your butt. And there's some of you ain't going to believe this, but their job is to squeeze you for as much money as they can get. That's what all this tickets and codes and, and without enforcement, what, what what happens? It's like my driving without a license for all those years. And I, I got stopped when Tennessee or something and got a ticket. And I said, thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. So there's probably an open ticket in Tennessee, but... I don't care. It was a driving thing. I didn't hurt anyone. A cop was looking for somebody in the neighborhood I was in and decided I looked like that man. Hmm. Yeah, because there's lots of guys my size that run around, you know, that look like me. It's, right, honey? I look like everybody, don't I? Yeah, because a lot of people look like I do. So, but that still to me was like no big deal I didn't run from the cop I stopped for the cop so even in my rebellion of 
fuck the paperwork. Uh, I still didn't do anything stupid to antagonize the other side of the coin just in case. Because I come from a time where the cops weren't so gun happy. They weren't so arrest happy. They weren't even so happy to have to fuck with you. You know, they do. They did a job. And then uh, over the last, I guess, the last 20 or so years, since 9-11, things have changed drastically. But the the mental instability of of the mind that is willing to go to work every day and break into strange buildings with guns and face whatever that's a sick fucking guy i mean there's nothing there's nothing complimentary about that that's entertainment on a television screen but it's not because that is how people get treated there's a certain amount of reality to it it's just so few there be 7 billion people you can fuck with millions and millions of us and others will never feel anything from that there won't be any backlash to it they'll just read about it in the internet like me I don't see physical violence I haven't don't know where it all comes from and all my traveling you'd think I'd run across somebody strangling or shooting somebody or robbing a bank something exciting but no now, and let's go to the chat for a minute, and Grimner tells me, Don't be insulting shitbags, flash somebody. Okay, I, 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 could, I got lost. <laughs> I get a little wordy, you know, and I have some strong opinions, but the, uh, the deceit and the lying that I, I saw as a child, 14 years old, well, child, to the state I was a child, to me, I was like, Hey, get the fuck off my back, I can live, I don't need you. But the state decided they needed to be there. Well, luckily for me, it wasn't as intrusive in my day as it, as it is now. Or the state would have probably snatched me from my home. Because uh, stupid things. I was a habitual runaway. Didn't want to didn't want to be told what to do by anybody. Leave me the fuck alone. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then when you have a kid that's that fucking headstrong. And you want to fight them, it's, that's, it's a loser. You're just going to fight. And when you think about when you're raising your kid, you know, whatever you are, that's what you're creating. So my father apparently was, he was a hell of a, you know, he stood his ground. I'm not talking about fist fighting and crap. When he made up his mind, that was the end of it. There was no baby please, oh, but dad, or none of that shit. It was, I said, end it. It's over. Done. Oh, let's go to the chat. That's an interesting thing. I live in poverty. Rob works. Well, in a sense, I think we all do because of the source of our supplies. If we were getting quality supplies, they, for one, they wouldn't need a price tag on them. I think that uh, the whole thing that we're living in, the way it's designed is so that uh, we'll settle for shit because we don't have enough funds to buy something that's good for us. But we don't know that, because, you know, I mean, I'm not talking about people that are comfortable. Like, we're comfortable, but we're not millionaires, you know, eating whatever the fuck millionaires would eat. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the uh, that fire in me to be wealthy. I think it's kind of the opposite to me. It's the more you got, the less somebody else has. And I'm not talking about how we live now. I'm talking about excess. Billions. Hundred million. What the fuck does anybody need a hundred million for? And then look at the insanity. I brought this up so many times. Nobody answers this. The banks, the five biggest banks in the world, claim they're trading five trillion dollars a day. No, they're not. They're saying they are, but you can't prove they're not. You can't prove they are one way or the other. you got to take their information from whoever they give it to to give it to you, and you got to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you end up at the dork table going, Hey, everybody's full of shit. <laughs> but in a perfect world, what do we do in a perfect world? 
Mm. It seems we comply. You know, our collective compliance, and it's uh, it's unavoidable because the only way to not really comply would be to be isolated from any form of society and not participate at all. And you might laugh at that, but there's tribes all over the world that that live just that way. They've never been, I would hope, but they've probably most of them have been gobbled up over, gobbled up by society over the years. Hmm. Yeah, and Vinny's talking about food on the Real Liberty Media dot com chat, and I I'm like that too. Where you know, whatever it is. If it's fancy, it's fine. If it's not fancy, it's fine. Something to eat is something to eat. And all that hoopla people do about food, okay. Uh, My mind goes to other places besides shit like that. Now, I'm way more interested in the quality of something than the title it has. Oh, look at this. I paid $12 an ounce for this, and it tastes just like (laughs) whatever it is. Calamari. Hey, there you go. Freeze-dried calamari for all your fish needs. Mm. And I'll do a Vinny here. I don't give a shit if it's 420. I'm hitting mine. And uh, try to carry on some with this uh, interpretation I have of law enforcement. Because I couldn't do that to another person. There's defending yourself from attack. And then there's just stupid. What other reason is there to be violent in the first place? In my perspective, if nobody attacks me, I attack nobody. And that, wow, you know what? That's such a complicated equation. That it fucking works. I walk and people are kind and pleasant and I get to my destination and everything's fine. Then I open up this magic box. The internet. Boy, I'm reminded that when we're overcrowded and undernourished and pitted against each other, you get some fucking weirdos in a society like that. And I've grown up in the light of the authorita. They're the problem. And they're they're a product of our own stupidity in the long run. Because the vast majority of the population doesn't want to be a spoken you know they don't want to be a a broken part of the machine they want to work with the machine they want the machine to succeed it's in, it's in your nature it's in your indoctrination it's in your exceptionalism how wonderful you are let's build a fence to keep people out so they'll stop coming here well you know if you didn't have a fucking welfare system that attracted them and then a bullshit story about immigration laws that don't even fucking exist in the first place because it's not illegal. <laughs> it's a it's a statute, you know. It's a code. It's not a fucking law. You can't even make a law like that. It's insane. Human life is not. Well, it wasn't originally for rich people to play chess with, but that's what they've turned it into. You know? I think that's where the disappointment with law enforcement comes in because when I was young they behaved in this fashion and as I grew up I watched them change like the Incredible Hulk you know bam you got this freaking 300 pound gorilla that doesn't do anything except destroy what's in front of it and if you don't recognize that then you don't have any relatives or friends that have ever been arrested for cannabis I mean here we are 20 fucking 19 and like the dumbest asses that could be produced we argue about whether cannabis should be legal or not not can we stop the prohibition and just forget it you know let people out of jail for possession charges simple shit like that that got them in trouble not crime but possession smoking a duber let them go. Quit arresting them. But no, what they did was, now they just 
changed it from the act of smoking it isn't breaking the law anymore. Now it's that opens the door to see how much you got so that they can get you for possession. <laughs> Where's the upgrade? I, I mean, are you fucking serious? People are so gullible. And then the, here's the hypocrisy of the police. It's illegal today. It's not illegal the next day. But you know what they're still doing? They're using it as a way to get into your shit. I still, I smelled pot and couldn't stop myself. Your Honor, I was afraid for my life. You ever been hit with a Twinkie? <laughs> Never mind. That made me laugh. I know, I tell dumbass jokes sometimes. Anyway. But, I mean, potheads are just the the, the non-violent, hippie, don't want to fuck with you, leave me alone crowd. And we've been victimized and demonized for... Uh, 80 years. Just insane, stupid stories from morons that never even fucking knew what they were talking about. You know, Asslinger. <laughs> I smoked a marijuana cigarette and I turned into a bat. And that's on the record, but he never tells anybody how he turned back into a human being from being a bat. How long did it... Nothing. Just the statement. And saying that on the record was enough to do all this can you imagine the shit they do to us that we don't even we're not even aware of it because you know while you're being an armchair quarterback and you're all knowing about Venezuela and all the Venezuelan problems and whether they're socialist or not and all, all this stupid fucking nonsense 5G's coming people I don't know if it's here uh, I'm not going to I'm not even going to think about it right now about where I'm sitting. I'll wait for tomorrow. But the threat of it on the internet is that they're going to put it into the big cities of America. And what they did was they wrote laws already for improvements of this kind can't be challenged because they threaten the public health. So, wow. I was, that's what I was saying the other day on a different program is this is to me this is huge and I'm already seeing other people's uh, links about hey this this 5G is not good and this is why if you listen to this link you'll get it and, okay they convinced me it's not good now what that's not a defense against putting it up and using it and you've got plenty of people in love with this freaking cell phone shit. And it's convenient, and it's fast, and, you know, abracadabra and all that fucking shit. But in the end, you know, in the long run, it doesn't really work. And it doesn't work because it's got so many problems connected to it. And although it does function, I don't mean it works good. I mean it works. It's, uh, it's open to flaws that you can't really explain to people that don't use it because there's still poor people that think they use cash because they get a check and then they take it to a bank and the bank gives them some fiat currency so they got cash those people never understand that the bank owns the cash well the federal reserve owns the cash the federal reserve owns the bank the bank's just a building you go to to play their little game and nothing has a value anymore we're living well beyond our means as a globe they're trying to tell us, right? It's because we're hundreds of trillions of dollars in world debt or something. Derivatives markets. and These idiots have they've conned their way into a corner and I think they've run out of stories that are actually going to work on people you know, maybe the voting public might still buy it one more time. Maybe not. They're showing signs of reality in France. And according to the Internet, the yellow vest is spreading. And what Poland used to be the butt of all the fucking jokes, and now Poland is being looked up to because they're standing up and protecting their own from invasion, from <laughs> immigration, you know. Mm. I wonder if it's safe to say that the uh, Polish don't have a lot of stake in the uh, the war machine. Maybe they're they're not in it as deep. And, well, I, I don't know, I hope you're talking to the dog. Uh, 
Okay. I can't hear you, but I know you said something, dear. Anyway, um, I don't stay up on top of politics, but I pay attention to the things that get my attention. Law enforcement usually does. And if you're, uh, if you've ever seen the links that Rob Works puts up about the police, wow. After watching a couple of the, you know, the, the finest of the finest get out there and serve the public and put it up on the internet on a video to, you know, video link for the whole bunch of us to see and then expect us to support these freaking hypocrite liars. <laughs> Why? They don't do anything. They just, uh, they're violent thugs that go out to make money off of violence and disruption and problems. They don't solve anything. They've been, con you know, the whole core of it's been rewired, rewritten, you know. And now every we're the enemy. The public is the enemy. When I was in America, I felt that way, by the way. You know, having lived there all those years, for those of you that go, what is this guy talking about in America? That, uh, well, it's because I've got family and friends that are still there. All of you, you know. Some of you guys, I I actually get along with very well, you know very well too. It's surprising. And it's all on the internet, but there's a certain amount of reality to this, even though it's electronic. And see, then then I get my mind goes back to thinking, wow, if Larry Wood's theory is correct, it makes all the sense in the world. We're on the wrong frequency, period. And the system that you know uh, makes all the decisions in our life, they keep those big, you know, technical things private. So you got to go to school and get an education. You can't just pick up a book and fucking learn something. No, 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 no. That doesn't matter. Where well, where's your sheepskin, son? And we've been conditioned into believing that if somebody could produce a certificate then what they say behind that certificate is true and like a bunch of butt nuggets we go okay because history shows you time after fucking time after fucking time everything they tell you turns out to be different at the very least different if not completely the opposite of what they said so hmm, honesty you know wow and Police, it can't. They cannot work hand in hand because how would uh, a guy that was an honest man, he minds his business and he lives a good life, have a job where he has to go kick somebody's door in, and then explain to somebody, "Oh, I'm sorry, I had the wrong address. We, whoops, <laughs> what have we done? And bust your whole fucking house up." But they're not responsible for that. There ain't a court in the world that's going to do anything to the police. And I know there's a few holdouts on the reallibertymedia.com chat that don't believe that's true. I'll bet Rob, Rob and Grim would put links up on this one because they know what I'm talking about. You know, there's there's so many different layers of life, it seems. You know, because uh, some people are introduced to uh, the hypocrisy of authority at a very early age. And some people are not. They never see what what I'm explaining from my side. Never going to understand it. Their wiring and their indoctrination is set up so that the minute I start talking, they get negative. Now, I don't want you to hear this. No, 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 no. That's not the truth. And my truth has always been we're being lied to. I'm not claiming any fucking truth saying that the people that tell us what they tell us are full of shit and we've proven it for years and years and years but average Joe isn't he doesn't get it goes right past him like he never said a word or they roll their eyes because it doesn't you know it doesn't ring with their the wavelength they're on rejects it and these things are real we we have connections and uh, I think as living carbon beings, right? We're connected in wavelengths. 
that we don't we don't uh, get exposed to pursuing what all that means. So you grow up, as I did. You find out about it at a late age. And then it starts to make other things that happen make sense. Because, oh, I can see how that could have been possible now. But at the time, it looked like, wow, what a coincidence. Like uh, when I went to hitchhike on, to go see my mom on Mother's Day that one time, where I... I couldn't just go visit her because I was way the fuck away somewhere. And maybe that was the vibration that you know, that resonance stuff that we talk about in action where the the way things were rolling were a result of the action and it was a kid going home and all that American apple pie stuff that you read about and here it is actually happening and people treated me accordingly. You know? And had I been lying and not really been telling the truth, I don't think I would have got where I was going, is the whole point. Uh, the truth has always been something that worked against me at you know here and there. But if it's true, whether people like it or not, is it, that's not relevant. We're taught it's relevant. We're taught it matters. You know, it's like the right things. Mm. we've been conditioned to believe somehow that this entity that you can't touch or see or nothing it's just this thing they tell you about Okay, the government is granting you permission to do shit why? why does it grant you permission to do anything? why does it protect you from nothing? Uh, if you live a life like I'm living and I'm 59, I'm telling you that the thing there is to protect yourself from is the state. You know, the bad guys, the bad guys are looking for money. They're not looking for, uh, they don't want a relationship with you and, you know, know all your business and who your mom is and what's your maiden name and all that kind of crap. Those, those people are bankers. <laughs> They're the nice ones, you know. They butt rape you, but they got good suits and they, you know, they smell good and they got clean fingernails. <laughs> so, oh man, I got scattered thinking about police and banking and all these horrible things that that come up in in our life, you know, and how we deal with them. We comply because there's no other game. The other game is, it's uh, got pitfalls, you know. Being a, what do you call it? Being a politician? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. You know that to lie and steal and cheat and misdirect on that level at in a society and claim that you don't know you're doing it. it that sounds kind of, I don't know, proper vibrational frequency, Vincent. Uh, but it sounds kind of like a story, like the the honesty of the cop. You know, how can these people in seats of power sit down and actually agree on all the garbage that they've given us as law. I mean, if they're not trying to fuck us over, what are they doing? Inoculations? Are, I mean, where do you start? It go, I guess it started in the 18, about 1850. Clint Richardson did some really good stuff on this. But he decided to get off the radio and uh, write a book, or books, I'm not sure. Uh, but he did some great stuff, and he opened up a few doors. And one of them was the vaccine. Got me started in thinking, because uh, when I was younger, I remember people just going all ape shit at each other about, "Don't be shooting no damn heroin. What are you nuts? You put a needle in your arm, and that was the, that was the ring, man. That's what people said. Smoking that Mary Jane marijuana that's going to make you all strung out on a street corner, and you're going to want to go home with J. Dread. Don't do it. Well, unfortunately, that that stuff's just—I don't know—it's just a bunch of crap. And uh, if you got to buy pot on the black market. I would recommend it. I prefer it. I think anything the government has is tainted. It's either tainted or stolen anyway. Because, you know, if, if they've been burning what they, you know, what they steal from the people that were 
steal. You probably need a translation out there, huh? Uh, what they confiscate, you know, from the drug dealers, ha, 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 whatever little bit of that that they did end up catching people with and whatnot, they're supposed to burn all that. Well, doesn't that defeat the purpose? <laughs> You're going to burn it. So they had to destroy it. I wonder. Maybe they just said they did. Sold it. Like they do everything else. Oh, don't forget, folks. We've got uh, asset forfeiture. And Trump Trump loves the asset forfeiture. And you'll love the asset forfeiture, too, until it happens to you. And then you'll go, hey, you know what? I don't like asset forfeiture. Mm. And I wonder how they pick their victims, too, because they claim, well, they're looking for, you know, undocumented earnings. <laughs> Which goes to that thing I tell you about a million. If you found a million dollars, it wouldn't be a fucking... It would be the worst thing that could ever happen to you because you can't do anything with it. And if you do something with it, boom, it's gone because the government's going to want a percentage of it and this and that and that. So much time if nobody else claims it. What the... F you know? And then if you try to spend it, Hey, where'd you get all that cash? <laughs> million dollars is a lot of money. And we've been billionaired and trillionaired into not appreciating. And then, of course, we got inflation and taxes and <coughs> climate change. <laughs> Don't forget climate change, guys. Because, uh, you know, man is a pest. We're destroying the planet that we live on. Now, keep in mind, we're getting told this same crap by the people that put fluoride in 40% of the public drinking water. Well, let's see now. See, so when a, when a government openly tells you the truth and you don't even believe it or you don't even care, I mean, I care a great deal. I care enough to not want to be there. And fortune, boy, well, fortune was with me, and I, I left it. But uh, I still do. I have a lot of friends that are there, and a lot of the friends that I've got don't live in the city where this is affecting people. And that's the other part of the equation: is you only live in one little spot of a great big place, as I do. I'm just one little house in this great big territory. And in the world map, it's a little dot. But to me, it's huge, right? Well, how many people do you think you're going to encounter in a day? You know, I've talked about this before, too. We have so little physical contact with other people that's, that's uh, relevant. You don't even know who you're walking by. You just walk by. Because we're so crowded. 10,000 people might not sound like a large population, but... There's no way for me to recognize everybody I've seen in four and a half years. I wouldn't. Might have seen them three years ago, not not till and then all, huh? But I'm kind of stand out because of the, the height and the hair, and people don't forget me as easily. But to me, I, I'm just not. I got bad eyesight and all this other shit. But uh, what people look like changes too. Where if you cut your hair, or diet or something, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know my wife if she came home with, you know, a short haircut or something. I'd freak, hey, who the fuck are you? For a second. I'd go, oh, no. Not that she's going to do that, because we have a deal. If I cut mine, she cuts hers. So, I don't want her to do that. I'm a selfish Jewish bastard, and I want my wife to have a big hairy head. <laughs> and she does. <laughs> See, when you make your wants known, they say make your wants known to the universe. Well, what is the universe? We've all been convinced it's out there, all around there, out there, boom, out, 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 out. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's, it's us, because there's way smaller things going on inside me, cells and all this other crap that's individual, but they're in groups, you know. These, this group is a this, and that group is a vein, and that group is a bit of skin. <laughs> well, I guess your skin is all one. It's all connected somehow. And then you got your fingernails. And 
little, you know, just little stupid ideas that I'm having a dork moment on in a perfect world. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, did I? Hey, Vinny. But, uh, yeah, I'm just chitter-chattering on, on the In a Perfect World podcast because I was thinking so negatively about the, the police, the government, and all the hypocrisy and the lying and the despicable nature of life. And even if it's good, it's still, we're getting bombarded with uh, things we can't see in ways we are not taught to understand, so we don't even know they're happening. And then when you find out, how do you explain it to somebody else? And you go, yeah, mm, aliens been probing you, huh, sport? Mm. Now, I've been accused of... Uh, being a flat earther because I hold an opinion that neither side has physical proof of their story and because I doubt the globe well if you doubt the globe then you got to be for the flat well no you don't have to be anything that's you telling me see what I tell other people is what I think I'm not telling them what to think I don't care what you think how could I possibly care what you think. Now, I guess I would care if I wanted you to agree with me and we're, you know, we're in tune like me and Rob. We both just despise the police. Wow. Grimner, another, he's another one. He can't stand the sight of him. Now, those two guys are more verbally colorful on the typing. Me, I lay back. I don't. I don't have a lot to say. But on the radio, I've got more of an opinion because I can speak more or less, not typo and fuck up my point and putting in the wrong word. <laughs> I might say it wrong, but I can clean that up, you know. Or listen to the uh, what I say later. And, oh, I see what I, what I left out, where I was going that I missed. But I'm going to say this again. I don't believe that a man or woman can get up and go to work as a police and not be a half crook. There's no way to explain that to me any other way. But other people got the stories. uh, The evidence is looking really bad for the police. And if you do any studying about it, Small places that have uh, fired their local police have uh, been more successful with crime going away. And, the, and of course, the, the state considers traffic infraction crime, you know, because they randomly pull people over. Or they're going to bound to hit somebody that's wanted for something out of all those people, because that's what overpopulating does. And they don't even tell you you're overpopulated. They they tell you this is within the confines of society. And man, you crammed in like freaking chickens in a house. No, 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 no. It's 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 all right when you're a kid, I suppose. Well, then even then, looking back, I wouldn't change the way I lived because the, the things that I did, everything linked into the things that I'm to do doing today. <laughs> that was fun. So. I don't mean it in so much of that, like, do it over respect. More of that, pay attention to what you do, you know, and look around and see what's available. Because there's a lot of people that don't recognize the doorway that's there in front of them because they're negative. You know, and if you're negative, that's what you're going to find. That's what I learned. I finally learned that freaking lesson. I've got that one notched in my mind for good. I, I won't forget it again. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm negative, I draw negative. Now, whether I recognize it or not, that's not really important. You know, I think I thought it was at the time that, that uh, the times in life where, where these things were applicable. But there's always more to uh, what's going on than I'm aware of, you know, because we got all these electrical things. We're electricity, and we're water, and we're blood and bone, all these components, and then we got this consciousness. That that just takes the thing to uh, another level. 
I mean, I've sat with my dog and just just stared at the dog. Don't speak to her. Don't just stare at her. No petting or anything. And the dog will make um, deep eye contact. And sometimes she won't. But there's a. It's just weird that an animal is so much like us and <laughs> and so different at the same time because they really live in the moment they're in. They don't know there's a yesterday. They don't even know there's a tomorrow. They're just right fucking now. And uh, I catch my dog, and sometimes I catch her in those uh, aggravated, uh, jumpy moods, and she wants to play tug-of-war. And sometimes she's just calm and docile and just wants to just be still. And all these things are results of you know what we put out in the environment, we get them back. You know, it's a hard thing to understand. I I don't think I understand it completely. I'm just expressing a you know a point of view on a particular part of it, and I think that outside interfer- interference into you comes in so many different ways that some of it you don't you don't have a, an ability that you're aware of to recognize it, so you don't know what's there. And you start out, somebody else tells you. Like Larry Woods explained. On We did plenty of radio with Larry. And he taught me a, a lot of new ideas to look at things with. And I had the opportunity to take the information and go wherever I pleased with it. There was no test. There was no fill out the form. And there was no, you know, show me your, your work. It's just Larry explaining himself and then me taking what I took from it and going where I'm going with it. But Larry wants to do things for other people. And uh, I don't think I care enough. Uh, You know, there's too many people. So many out there already doing... There's nothing I can do that can't be done by somebody else. Uh, The radio thing is for a giggle, crying out loud. Uh, Being popular on the on this side of the civilization is never going to happen. The anarchist mind is always going to be looked down upon by the superior status brain because they're better than we are. Okay, that's fine with me. I just don't want to physically deal with you. Is That's that's the bottom line. Not, not whether or not you exist or you believe this or you believe that. I don't really care about what anybody believes. Uh, poor Cirque. It must be held to uh, to try to tell me something at, at this point where I'm at. And locked up in the winter time, a little grumpier than usual. And uh, there's uh, just so much knowledge in there that everything I hear, I've heard it before somewhere. Very little is coming across in daily life that isn't a rerun. Now, I don't know if that's some form of aggravation or or what but I'm not uh, I'm not as happy see I'm not a happy go lucky like Vinny's a happier guy I'm more of a standoffish I, I think that's the way to put it and doing the radio is the exact opposite of how I physically am uh, <laughs> even when my in-laws come around <laughs> I, I try not to crowd them because they, I haven't learned any Danish. They know that. We we understood that from day one. Amongst the family, it was, yeah, you can waste your time all you like, but uh, if we want to talk in front of you and, and don't want you to know, we'll just change the slang so you won't know what we're saying. And she had the decency to tell me that right up when me and Cirque were taking this thing seriously and planning to stay together. And I thought, wow, that that's pretty cool. So it gave me kind of a, an excuse to go along with my inner my inner feelings about learning Danish in the first place, which was I couldn't learn to, to speak this language no matter what. I'm never going to have the uh, the interest and the the knowledge at the same time to to perform the task. So it would always be half-ass. And like I speak English, it would never be exceptional. So. <laughs> And, and, and in my opinion, in some pa- some points, not understood because some of the words are so difficult to learn how to make the sound. <laughs> it's a beautiful language, too. But um, 
to me, you know, to, they're exotic. I've been here for years, and to me, they're still like, wow, these people are cool. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, in a perfect world amongst people that aren't. And uh, I'm not so... I'm not so much saying perfect like uh, it's as good as it can be for me is perfect. That To put a label on something like perfect and then not define it how I actually mean it. Because it, it was a misleading kind of title. You know, in a perfect world, this would happen and that would happen. Or maybe we're in a perfect world. <laughs> it's, a, it's all a matter of how you look at it, I suppose, what your circumstances are and uh, how you live in you know what you're doing with life, and uh, yeah, like Moose changing jobs, and now she doesn't have to work until twelve in the afternoon, but she gives up her evenings and she she works until eight. If I got this right, Moose, I hope I'm not butchering your your input here, <laughs> but it threw everybody off because you used to have to get to sleep and get up earlier in your other job than the one that you had. So your time shift on work shifted your time on the internet. <laughs> and it was interesting because it was so misunderstood about why you were on the internet at the time of day that you were on it. And there, you know, it just goes to interpretation. One person reads what, what they see one way, and then somebody else reads it another. <laughs> or you don't hear a part of it, like when Vinny was down in Vegas. I don't think Moose knew he was in Vegas. I thought she she thought he was in in Arkansas. Had no idea he was actually down there. <laughs> but see the this uh, internet it it does both dull the senses and sharpens. It depends on the situation at hand. <laughs> and like my my difficulty with learning how to operate this these windows is I don't know. There's a logic to it or a what could there be? It's got to be eggy, you know, eggheady. These people did things in order, and they're specific, and this makes this available, and that happens after you do this. It's not happenstance. Turn on the car, look at the traffic, and, you know, hit the gas or don't. There's no choices on the Internet, is what I'm trying to get across. And my point is, if you do it wrong, you've done it wrong. If you do it right you've done it right. There's no middle ground. There's no like, well, let's let's see here. <laughs> I've, n I've not got to that point where Grimm can look at the results and pretty much figure out what went wrong in the equation that needs attention. And maybe someday I'll get there. I mean, I've got this thing for uh, guitar players. I really think there are a lot of prima donnas, but I like a good guitar player. And I ran into this woman, she's Asian, and now she's been around for a lot of years now, but she picked up the guitar at 60 years old, and uh, I had professional lessons, and she plays blues. She's not, she's not bad at all, she's very, very good, and uh, she's made recordings, and been on YouTube, and she's got a collection of guitars, and she took her replaced her family life when she was finished being a grandma and the family didn't need her attention then she picked up the guitar and she's made quite a quite a deal out of it and what impressed me was that at you know I'm not even that old yet I still got a few months to go so if I make it to that age I could pick up a, a new hobby if I want to and pursue that to a level of ability that I wasn't taught these things as a kid. Uh, we were taught a lot of bullshit that was nonsense. And then when you when you're really in life and you find out how it really works, it's so disappointing. Mm. I don't know what's worse, the financial system or the uh, the way that the electricity and and the way we're uh, forced to use petroleum products instead of cannabis. That that right there. That tells me everything I wanted about government. Is the, the most important things in life that would solve so many problems that they've made. They made them because they made hemp illegal. 
See? The prohibition created the problem that we have. And here we are, all these, what, hundred and something years later. People are addicted to cars. People are addicted to, uh, you name it. Anything that we use, petroleum-based, all these fucking computers, all the wiring that's covered. What is it? <laughs> the casings. And, <laughs> and what the public doesn't know is it would be cheaper in, <laughs> well... It would be cheaper in the long run because it would help the environment to use cannabis, but they don't they don't know that. I don't think the uh, the average guy has the time to sit down and and evaluate the reality. If they believe climate change is real, they, then they don't know anything about science at all. And I'm talking from being uneducated and everything I know I saw in a book or heard from a, another person, male or female. It was somebody specifically teaching me a lesson with words. This will happen if you do that. You know? So, I don't know if there, were, if there was a lot of kids my age that grew up that way. I don't, I don't hear too many people talk about it now. I haven't in my lifetime either. Because where does all your information come from? You, know, you go to school. You got grown ups around you, so where does uh, somebody grow up and learn that voting is a good thing and police are necessary parts of society? Without them, you can't function. Uh, without taxes, you don't have roads. I mean, all of this drivel and nonsense and crap because. In the long run, you have your freaking roads and you have your freaking taxes, but the roads are just disgraceful. They're falling apart. Places, uh, bridges are impassable. Blah 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 blah. Oh, but there's no money to fix them because we're twenty trillion in dollars in debt because of that damn whatever president, this that and the other. And the truth is, it's this freaking fractional reserve banking that they use with the Federal Reserve Bank. You, we've been pushed into a state of the only uh, finance being transacted at federal level is they're paying the interest on the loan. They're not even paying the loan. They haven't paid the loan in so long that it can't ever be paid. So, so they distract us with shit like Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. Iran and North Korea and all these world problems and all these horrible dictators and look at what they're doing but if you live in America right now and the things that I read about are true wow you guys got fucked and the only way to oh, the only way to do it comfortable would be to live away from the city if you live in a city woo, I think that would be Uncomfortable, at the very least. You know, like, out of all of us, probably Vinny's got the the best strategic spot. You know, because he's out in the woods, he's free of the damn, tr you know, the trap. But he's still connected to us. You know, so he can say, "Hey, this is happening. That's happening. Where I'm at." And so can I. I mean, if shit hit the fan here, I'd go, "Hey." RLM, red alert, we're being invaded by the Germans. Hansel was right. <laughs> but, <laughs> never, not in, sorry, folks, where we live, nobody, nobody in their right mind would want to invade where we live. It'd be a waste of time. There's nothing to invade. We're just on the coast of a little tiny place. It's pointless. We're, we're not a threat to anybody here, and Oh, so the whole world that's got all this war going on, uh, although it's so far away physically, being you know, uh, being capable of seeing it on the internet every day and keeping up with it because that's what we do. I don't know. It's in another one of those sick addictions. I'm from that damn place, and damn it, I want to know what's going on with my people, whether you're my people or not. You're my people on paper, according to the system. See, I can always use that system for my benefit. 
but I avoid that system using me for its benefit because it's already done that behind my back. I mean, they trade us like uh, <laughs> they trade us on the stock exchange <laughs> through the birth certificate. It's a banknote. <laughs> it's exactly what it says it is. It is a birth certificate, and we are ships. <laughs> we're treated like we're treated exactly like property by an entity that we all subscribe to whether we want to or not because if you don't then you can't use it so hmm, it's a catch-22 to try to dig your way out of hmm. and like I was saying uh, having the ability to read and write and do art will that will get you through anything in life <coughs> I've met probably in a lifetime I've met hundreds of people maybe even thousands of people way more talented physically and with art and music than I'll ever be and that was okay with me I wasn't uh, competing with them but their talent was just it would show to me in one way and that my talent would show to them and they go yeah but I can't do what you do the way you do it your way can't be taught my way, I can show you how technique art works, and it's the results are phenomenal. And they look random and all that, but there's a math equation that goes into producing it. You know, there's a math equation that goes into making everything that we do, but we're not taught these little details that seemingly don't matter. And then one day, you m might... Oh, okay, I'll be up. Am I running out of time here? Fifteen. Oh, okay. You're going. Okay. So I'll see you in a bit, honey. Hmm. Oh, that was a in a perfect world interruption from the wife. She's gonna go on upstairs and call it a night. She has to go to the city and play adult tomorrow, so she needs her beauty sleep. You uh, <laughs> know, I've got another hour left, so. Hmm. Yeah, but you interrupted me. Now I lost my train of thought, paying attention to my wife on the radio like a... Yeah, I'll, I'm going to be the laughing stock of the Jewish-Mexican world. All my pure Jew-Mexicans... Did you hit your hand? Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, she cut her finger. Had a little accident making, uh, making dinner the other night. And just hit her finger wrong, sadly. Hmm. Fingernail to oh poor sir, she's the clumsiest wife there is to have. But I guess I'll just have to keep her. Where are we? We got Vinny and we got Miss Kate and we got Grimner chitter chattering about important stuff about going on in the world of the electronics, whatever the hell that meant. I don't know. They're talking all kinds of numbers and what they're on. I remember what you're on was about, you know, hey, you've been taking Valium. <laughs> In fact, I got a, I got a pill story that's probably going to be weirder than... I've, I've told this to a few people over my lifetime, but it's never been a topic of, of great conversation because it didn't happen more than once. But... uh I was uh, 15 years old, and I was running around with this girl from Whittier, where I, I like to associate, but I didn't live in that city. I was living in Downey at the time, so there was a commute, and uh, her mother had a shoebox just filled with prescription pills. There was all kinds, pills, 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 and lots of them, and uh, I was going to hitchhike home. And I had a headache coming on. I said, oh, hey, I got a little bit of a headache coming on. And she says, well, here, take these when you get home. Don't take them now. Take them when you get home. Take these. Now, when I got home, I couldn't remember if she said take one of these or take these. So to this day, I go with take these. So I did. And uh, I started to feel woozy and... Uh, lightheaded and whatnot, but I was hungry. So I went to the kitchen, and my buddy, my best friend, shows up. I'm standing there in the kitchen, making something on the stove, 
and he says, I out of nowhere, I just my body stiffened and I just fell backwards, straight backward, no no uh, movement in my legs or arms, just another. And uh, <laughs> what turned out, what happened was, she gave me ten, uh, three ten milligram Valium, and I weighed like 135 pounds. So when that Valium hit me, it was like being hit by a truck, and I never planned on, never intended to. It was so. What she said was, "I told you, take one of these," but she gave me three, and somehow in my mind, one turned into these. <laughs> and uh, that's the day I learned that uh, pills aren't no good man what's the point of that uh, oh Vinny's on the devil's weed it's the devil's lettuce learn the proper slogan when you're defending the devil's lettuce because it sounds so cool when you, the, the devil's lettuce like uh, the guy on um, Jafar. <laughs> that was a great, great voice. Mm. You know, and being an artist is, uh, it's an interesting way to view the world, depending on the person, I suppose. But some people's, uh, their way they can do things impresses the shit out of me. But I do my own thing, so I don't, I don't look to copy what other people uh, are capable of doing. I do what they've done with my own my own uh, technique of drawing. And no matter what, what the drawing is, I can make it look like the one that was there. Anyway. But I've still, because having a gift has, well, really, I think it's been, uh, it's been the saving grace in my life. Being ta- uh, having a talent that other people would actually pay you money to to perform never seemed like employment it was always like oh god I get paid for doing what I please to do so you know and then when I was younger and I would do things like unload trucks or whatever uh, that's that was still it was uh, it wasn't bad because to me that's how you that's how it was done I thought robbing a gas station or whatever kind of stupid shit other people were into that was kind of lame you know how many how many times are you going to do that before somebody decides to shoot you <laughs> I, I mean all my life all I've ever heard is stories and stories and stories right about how many gun owners there are and they're armed to the teeth and on and on and on and I know from experience there's plenty of ways to purchase a, a gun without licensing it and all that kind of thing because uh, there's a black market for everything that you could possibly imagine so but I've not been a, a, a gun lover so never bothered with all that stuff but knowing it's there whew, that you know, that could be a dangerous thing to know <laughs> you know who knows if if uh, Say I would have been friendly with a gun dealer and sent him business that the the business that got sent him didn't hurt somebody I knew. <laughs> People don't, you know, we're not taught about how valuable life is. So life is cheap, and it's so cheap. Turn on a movie and watch how cheap it is. People treat each other in films like absolute garbage, and it's entertainment. But I think it, I think it triggers. Uh, some folk on a, like see the wavelengths and the vibrations they hit us all differently and some people take that stuff so seriously you know and uh, it it affects their outlook on on life Whoa. <laughs> somebody's passing out their joints so what are you on hashtag yeah that's right hashtag it used to be the pound sign when I was a kid it was a thing on the telephone and even when I was on the uh, telephone, I can't remember what the damn thing did. <laughs> on the, remember the touchtone phones. Anybody out there my age tonight, Cowboy Tech might know. Grimner might know. Vinny might know. Yeah, I got a couple age peers going on. You know, 55 and up. <laughs> 50 and up. Where you remember the touchtone phone. And it had the pound sign on it. But what the hell was the pound sign on the damn button for? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't. I don't have a memory for this. <laughs> oh no, I'm f- falling apart on in a perfect world tonight. And uh, anyway, we're gonna. Oh, they're posting up about Venezuela. Now I get grimmer. He says, "Well, duh, Venezuelan." FM says U.S. sanctions expose oil as perfect purpose of coup attempt. You can call that news. How many years has this been going on? For crying out loud! Remember after Katrina, and they had all those oil wells sitting in the uh, Gulf, and they couldn't use them. They had to be moved to use them again. That was part of the. Uh, licensing or the insurance or some kind of agreement that these deep you know deep people make that you know make them a lot of money and fuck everybody else but these oil rigs had to be moved they were standing idle they couldn't be used where they were and I read back in that period of time that they use them to get to Venezuela they had to get the Venezuelan oil out of Venezuela off the coast, because they're a, they got a long, long coast. So it's either pretty safe to say that some of their oil is under the water, you know, and they need the uh, oil rigs to go out and get it. Well, if this has been going on since then, how could what's going on right now have happened recently? Yeah, this is a uh, another another one of those American things, you know. They're always involved in all the thieving and stealing. They call it another. They call it other shit, but it's horrible. What they did to uh, they, uh, what we, what we did to Gaddafi was deplorable. I mean, for crying out loud, he didn't he didn't hurt anybody. Well, maybe he didn't like the Jews so much, and who knows? Maybe he killed himself a couple of Jews. But whatever he did, it wasn't worth wiping out his whole civilization to be the top dog in the oil business but that's what happened it's always going to happen that's what's happening now all these wars are about uh, commerce and uh, resources and commodities and they he just made up a new thing what do you call those uh, Zionist approved puppet or ZAP an acronym for Zionist approved puppet uh, hey, anti anti popped in. I said hello to everybody in the beginning. I remember, it. I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, what's Kate putting up? He has State Department has certified the authority of interim president blah 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 to receive, control property and accounts of. Okay, and it's gone. She says poof. Says. Weird topic. Okay, they're chitter chatter now. An egghead on the reallibertymedia.com. Yeah, we got a lot of brainiac people that they they talk and uh, they're familiar with their topics, so they can just write little things that the other ones in on and understands. And there you go, just like uh, being in a group, you know. But it's not like you can't just learn the shit and join the group it's there for all of us that's the difference between the internet you know you can't lie on the now I'll tell you there's another thing lying is well you can do it but it doesn't fool anybody that's the beauty of the internet because uh, we're we're all alive (laughs) and we all have our own personal perspective and our own indoctrination to see these things that we read and interpret them and make sense understand and comprehend pass on to our others (laughs) no we don't (laughs) we have a planet full of morons that just repeat whatever the fucking government tells them to say doesn't even have to be true they don't even have to know it they just said they see it therefore I saw it on the internet it gotta be true well part of it's true we know that let's all agree on something as a collective and say part of this is really true but not all of it now I'm gonna go with a 9 to 10 split 
and I'm going to call 10% of this nonsense. What part of that is the nonsense? Oh, hold on, Doc. I'm coming. There you go. Cat wanted in the window. He's interrupting me while I'm doing my in a perfect world. But see, I got a perfect house. Got a cat in the window. Got a wife in the bedroom. You know, the dog at the ready to fight off the intruders. And nothing. And it's just peaceful. You know, I was I was not looking for excitement. There's enough excitement in the world. I don't think it's like the financial system. Nothing's going to change if I don't participate in it. Asset forfeiture for everybody, oh, for all, says Miss Kate. Well, yeah. <clears throat> and, oh, I was bringing that up too earlier. Trump, Trump's all behind that asset forfeiture shit. And <clears throat> you know, I too was raised with innocent until proven guilty. But over my lifetime, that whole concept was rewritten. And now you're guilty until you're proven innocent. What? 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 Huh? Hell, half of these morons can't spell warrant. They don't know what a warrant is. I seen a TV show to a couple of, maybe a week or two back. And uh, the statement the actor makes playing the cop, I have an open warrant. What? What did? What the hell is an open warrant? What What does that mean on TV land? And just another example: if if you watch some of these TV shows and you pay attention to them, I like Columbo. I think Columbo is a great concept. He's a f- entertaining character, and how he solves the things and all this is very entertaining. And then I started to pay closer attention because. I was curious, what did they say that I didn't notice? And there's a lot of subliminal, like, uh, political comments in the show about law and police, and they're, like, molding this public to believe these uh, ideas that just, they're not true. All this, uh, we're here to serve you nonsense. We're here to solve your crimes. That's a bunch of horseshit. And I decided that after I uh, took a good look at the John Wayne Gacy thing, you know. Oh, these kids were disappearing, blah, blah, blah. And John Wayne Gacy was living there, and he was burying them in his, in his basement. And his house stank so bad, the neighbors would go, hey, what do you got over there, a dead cat? But it went, un, you know, it went by. He kept explaining, that, I have a sewage pump problem. Now, this is what they portray on TV. Okay. So, you're trying to tell me this guy's got excuse me, in excess of 30 dead bodies buried under his, you know, residence. (laughs) And the neighborhood can smell it through the venting, but nobody recognizes the smell of death because he's put lime on it all these things that you get fed through television. Hmm. you got to think about this. This stuff creates an incredible amount of revenue through advertising to sell the idea to the public that this guy's been murdering young men, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what if he only killed two? You know, how, how do we know? Uh-oh, I got beeped on in my left ear wonder what that was about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I got cut off the air. I don't know. Let me let me do what it says. And I'll try to drag along. Am I still here? <laughs> Am I still live? I got a router comment here. Oh, no. I don't think so. I think I'm gone. Now, I'm still recording. Let me just open up uh, another window on the reallibertymedia.com chat and I'll get through this because it said my router uh, had interrupted blah 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 I had a little window there something got disconnected but my Spreaker 
it says I'm recording too and I'm going to go to the reallibertymedia.com chat as perfect Lee and ask <coughs> the <coughs> RL Emmers if I'm still broadcasting because at this point in time I'm not quite sure so I'm stalling for just a moment bear with me folks and forgets and it says okay so I'm back on the real liberty media let's see where am I it's not letting me click in uh, say hello whoa hello would be spelled like that wouldn't it yeah okay I'm back okay thank you Grimner sorry about this folks <laughs> this is what I mean about it outside interference you know because my it said my router disconnected me blah 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 but didn't specifically say what I got disconnected from and it turned out that it was the real liberty media dot com chat room now I've reopened it and got back in so we can continue tonight's reminiscence about the police in the United States uh, thanks Vinny I appreciate that uh, <clears throat> hopefully I get over my little my little mishap and we can you know do this next week the way it was designed to do and, and uh, get back get things back in track you know. but anyway I didn't want to drag drag us all through memory lane and just making a point because I saw Vinny on the RLM and <laughs> folks and folkettes baby that's what it's all about because you know I see people uh, posting horrible shit minds.com and uh I do a little traveling through, not too much, but Minds.com's got my attention. But a lot of the people there are very uh, anti the other gender, anti the other color, anti the other side of the political story. Uh, very few people understand how tied we are to each other. They think we're separated. You know, you make that separation real in your life, in your person, you know, how you behave, what you do. It's not some government dictates to us. Well, we believe they can, but they can't. Because uh, just because it's okay to do something doesn't mean you should do what it's okay to do. There are limits, you know. And oh, the first one that comes to my mind is smoking pot because uh, it's been so demonized and punished for so fucking long that it's got a, a black ring around it, you know. And people say, no, they don't. No, no. Okay, well, that's because the people that you associate with in reality, in your physical life, are usually like you. You're not going to hang around with people that don't smoke pot if you do. So if you do, the idea of the thing being legal all of a sudden, uh, if... if if you're not voting and, and all that, if you're just a normal, intelligent person that understands how this shit works and you smoke pot, mm, you get it. And if you don't, then people don't want to be around somebody that doesn't do what they do. Uh, we, water seeks its own level. I've said, I said that earlier, too, about it. Because uh, if I'm negative, I'm going to draw me a big handful of shit. And if I'm positive going to draw me a big handful of positive, whatever positive might be. Uh-oh, somebody closed the Uno, I guess. I don't know. They, they play all kinds of games, and these RLM people are computer savvy, you know? They, they know how to make the most of a computer, because I'm a game player, too. I play uh, online games like a little 15-year-old girl, so you can all have a good laugh at that. And I play lore. I like my Lord of the Rings. What else? <laughs> yeah, I'm just as uh, I'm just like everybody else in the long run. I just have a unique way of of defining the way I see the world. And the only people that ever upsets in my reality are the people that support it. People that don't support the state uh, tend to gravitate toward you know my way of perspective. Now my uh, what's the right way to put that M my state of being attracts or or 
deflects. You know, you'll look on my way of thinking and you'll have an opinion, and it's only going to be one of two opinions: anarchists are scum, or ah, oh, cool, another anarchist, yay, that's cool. And that's as far as it goes. We don't have secret anarchist meetings. Uh, there's no secret handshake. No tattoo. There's no identifiable fucking greeting. It's just the way that we think. And we believe that we can live in a world that is not ruled by authority. What's so hard to understand about that? I, I can even grab that. It's a very simple concept. You know, because where in your world do you need rulers <laughs> and people to uh, pass you down second-hand rate bullshit stories about things that never happened? Uh, they consider uh, the Bible. Oh, here we go. Uh, talk about an enemy of mine. This Bible thing. Now, there's people that find great, wonderful stuff in the Bible, and I just... No, it's written by guys in another language and translated. I don't have a fucking clue what it means. Now, that's my perspective. It's not popular. It's not shared. I'm the minority. But there are a few people that agree with me. And my principal reason for saying it that way is if men wrote it, there you go. Where'd it come from? You think it came it came from a man. I can write a book. I have I have enough material to probably write a book. But I just don't have the interest to do it. But if I did it, then I could hire me some pope and, you know, spread the word and four generations everybody but it would be a flash night. And follow my book and, you know, praise me because just destroy all the other books and my book's all that's left and that's what you're going to believe in it and they do it to us in groups huge groups millions and millions of people get uh, they get their lives controlled through the belief in a book and, and there's no physical reality to none of it and all the players that are in it Mother Teresa piece of shit I mean fuck Gandhi piece of shit as far as person you know their living style, the way they treated other people physically and mentally, was not the way they were portrayed to the public. The public saw the side that was the side the public was supposed to see. Like Mandela. God, I <laughs> when I was first on World Truth. <laughs> Somebody posted Mandela this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, fuck Mandela. And the next thing on the on the link was, oh, Lou doesn't like Mandela. Oh, he's a problem. Blah, blah. And this guy just went completely freaking tilt. Because I have a knowledge of Mandela that he doesn't share. The difference between our perspective, in my opinion, was... When I was in London, I had a friend from South Africa, white man from South Africa. He was going to marry <laughs> this English woman to get a green card so he could stay in England, specifically. This was their goal. This was what they were trying to accomplish. And I had a, a girl friend at the time, whatever, I somebody I knew well enough to take her and say, hey, you want to help me do this with my buddy? And the four of us conspired to get them to married, and we did the necessary things we had to do, witnessed it and whatnot. And the reason I did that was because he had told me what his home was like, why he did not want to return there, so did the woman he was marrying. They weren't doing it for any other reason. It was a completely political fucking thing. But they needed a witness, and they asked me, so I did it. But I did want to know, well, what the hell am I getting myself into here? And I thought at the time that the, the cause was way more important than how we got there. Just Let's just do this. And it put a really bad light on Mr. Mandela. 
it's the difference between you know living in New York City and reading about New York City because I've done both and according to you know the time that you were there and the time you know, this is possible and that's possible when I was living there it was supposed to be dangerous and crazy I, I don't know I traveled whenever time of day I wanted to go out in and out midnight four in the morning whatever trains running every damn where uh, I never got attacked by anybody. Uh, panhandlers didn't even <laughs> really. I mean, they were there. Just you, either you dealt with them or you didn't. Uh, I'm trying to think of all these problems in society. And no, wasn't mugged in New York City, but I was there in '86. So, and what I'm saying in the long run is that in my history, my looking on on the life <coughs> that societies decayed so badly since the time I was in my 20s living in it to the time that I'm at now looking on it. What a disgrace. I mean, the stuff that you read, I don't know if it's true. <clears throat> People are shitting on the streets of San Francisco. Are you out of your freaking mind? I lived in that city for three years on and off. Well, for the, say for the most part, I was pretty stable living there. I took off a few months here and a few months there, but for the 80, like six, seven, eight, nine, right there. And uh, when I was living there, people were they were alive and they were out in the street and they were breaking laws and doing things and they had the tenderloin. I loved to drink in the tenderloin when I lived there. That was, uh, they had a nice variety of bars. One place had like jazz night and people would just bring an instrument and people would get up there and play music and sing and just do jazz and shit and it was wild and uh, other places jukebox or no music at all it was just like no matter what mood you were in go to the tenderloin you'll find it but the, the, the worst part of it it was where the derelicts of the city lived in associated you know the the people like the girl with the blue hair uh, those dangerous ones you know, she's got a skirt and boots you know army boots and blue hair but they look funny but I used to drink with these people and they were the, the nicest damn people and we'd get drunk and have fun at the bar you know, listen to music and talk about stuff just like everybody else but <laughs> But we've been conditioned in life to believe the most nonsensical crap through advertising gimmicks and peer pressure and what brand of this do you use and what and it, when when I found out found the internet then I started to have the ability to look at things more closely and I found out wow we just been screwed the whole time just like I thought but could never prove it it was always me ranting like a nut job. Yeah, we know. <laughs> you know, military people. Ten years uh, of military people. There wasn't, there wasn't much to say. Because you know? these fuckers are uh, paid to go to another place and destroy shit, <laughs> do all kinds of horrible, nasty, dirty things, and, and never tell you about it. And I say that because of the results. I never heard them say, "Hey, we went over there and partied, and everybody got along." What they told me to my face was, I can't talk about what happened. Don't even ask. I'm not going to know. Not for you. So, hmm, make what you want out of that. <laughs> and, and and this is a, this is a uh, living under the same roof ex-Marine wouldn't tell me nothing. And this guy would tell you what color his socks was, but he wouldn't tell you what happened in, a, in Iraq. No, 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 no. Nor would any of the neighbors or any of his friends. In ten years, I never met any Marine that would tell me, yeah, well, we went over there and did this. No, 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 no. It was all secrecy. You know? And I wasn't in the club. And that was just, period. The Marines know each other. They they know. They got this thing, Marine thing. Even after they quit being Marines, there's still a part of them that identifies other Marines. It's like the cult that I'm trying to start, you know, because I want to start a cult be a cult leader have little flashlights <laughs> lighting my way you know carrying my robe behind me or the flashlights that's what I'll call them in Flash's cult 
Right. That's what I'm going to do with my my time is start a cult. Can you imagine the responsibility of being in charge of a cult? Mm. What would you do with that kind of power? Where you could tell people to do whatever it is came to your mind to tell them to do and they actually did it? Wow, that'd be like being a boss or a politician, huh? Mm. Nah, I don't want to do that. But, I see, I shouldn't say... i got to live up to my word and I do not like to say, well, that just sounds so disgusting I ain't going to try it. Well, being a cult leader has a good side to it. <laughs> so it sounds kind of disgusting in one way, but then in another way. I could call my followers flashlights and feel real special and make them give me all their money and build a big compound and tell them all what to do. You work in the garden. And you, you, you don't have to work. <laughs> ah, you have other talents, I am sure. Ha, 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 ha. But, see, it's kind of ridiculous in a way, but it's, it's possible. I wonder if anybody else out there wants to be a cult leader. We could go into competition. I'll start my cult, the Flash Cult, and you start your cult, the Dalt Cult. <laughs> and we we'll see who gets more members who will come. Pete, like good capitalists. Never mind, I've got the inside track because, <laughs> well, just coincidentally, on for the first time in my life, I'm on the, I'm on, the, I'm on the side of the, uh, the majority, <laughs> where I associate on the internet. <laughs> there are far more people who agree with the anarchist mentality than don't. And the ones that don't, well, they can. They got a carry permit. They got guns. Wow, kind of makes me jealous to think about that. Wow, you can get a certificate that'll allow you the privilege of buying a gun. You know, just in case somebody tries to murder you. Well, you know, see, my mind just doesn't work that way. I I don't want to live. I don't want to finish my life, especially living in in that defend myself from everybody mentality. So I don't know, I put the feelers out in the electronic world, and uh, I come up with uh, peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah, the Tluck cult. <coughs> Cowboy, <coughs> Cowboy would probably make a good, good cult leader. Just get everybody stoned and. Tell them to have a good time. I see... That's how I see... Uh, if you were a cult leader, Cowboy Tech, you'd be like, okay, have a good day. <laughs> that's it. I don't I don't ever see you tell anybody anything. You post some hellacious links to about freedom and about the truth about how things are. <laughs> I hope... I hope more people notice. You know, I try to tell them that, man. Your stuff is great. Get it? You know, yeah, sure, you're welcome. But uh, like on BitChute, I get the most knowledge out of Jerry, the weird Jerry guy, and he's got, like myself, I guess, kind of a weird way of uh, speaking, explaining himself to the public. And uh, but the knowledge, the the style that he that he uses to disclose information is not happenstance. He's very he's very uh, detailed. He he t- takes a situation and he runs it back to the beginning of the situation in his form of doing research. And he finds out some topics that are so deep, I don't even know how to repeat them. But he goes into Sandy Hook quite a bit. There's a lot to do with the Masons. He believes the Masons are always behind war. The war we're in now, Masons. And he claims he's got links and information. He can prove everything he says. Okay. Whether he can or not, I'm very entertained by the logic of what I get from his podcasts. And other people don't see him in that same light. And I understand that. He's, he's like me. He can't 
he's not for everybody. And I heard him say in one of his podcasts that I'm doing this for myself, really. I mean, I'm glad you guys like it and you're watching, but this is for me. And I got that from Vincent, too. It's, you know, doing the radio, it's... it's uh, very frustrating and sometimes it's difficult and there's a lot of things that uh, take a lot of attention but in in the long run it's really for me to do for myself and luckily I get people that really do understand what the hell all this means and they understand it and they agree with it so they listen and I try not to tell you what your opinion should be I try to tell you what mine is and I always know it's just an opinion I got no no physical way in the world do I have to prove anything to you. I'm not even trying to prove anything to you. Why don't you uh, <clears throat> prove it to yourself? You know, like the America Make America Great Again. Well, see, depending on your indoctrination and your upbringing, and all the variables that go into making that statement. Because I had a great childhood in a lot of respects. And I had a shitty childhood in a lot of respects, because that's what life is. It's a balance of this and that. And we were trained to call it good and bad, and it's it's just life. Shit happens, and there you go. You deal with it. You live with it. Sometimes it's weather. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's wavelengths. Whatever it may be. Now we have this wonderful tool called the Internet. And using it, you can find any answer that suits you to feel comfortable in your decision about any topic. All you got to do is type and scroll until you hit, you know, what you're looking for. And then when you find it, then you're justified in your decision. See? Now, I believe that's true because I'm on the opposition and I'm not for authorita. I am very much against authorita. I think authorita is the problem that we all share. So I'm on the fringe of society looking at it in that perspective. But in the reallibertymedia.com, guess what? For once in my life, I'm not at the dork table. I'm in a perfect world. <laughs> and, and that perfect world comes with dolts to, you know, to piss on the floor so that we won't forget them because they have they have got to get their share of attention it's not about their message it's about them tying up things so that other people can't use it for an intelligent purpose it's a distraction <laughs> so if you're uh, one of those people that likes to entertain and be distracted I recommend that the dolt go the dolt road it's free and it won't cause any irreparable damage because it's just entertainment. Try to keep that in mind in the electronic world that whatever crap I come up with, you know. Whatever I think, it's just what I think. It doesn't mean anything. It's just what I think. If it means anything, it should mean something to me, not to you. You got your own mind, you know. And agreeing with other people, it's it's cute and it's wonderful and all that horseshit. But when I really, really give it some good thought, I would rather not agree with certain people. And fortune in being what it is with me, I found Real Liberty Media where people kind of think that the shit I do. We all have different lives, too. Some are single, I'm married, uh, some are wanderers like Vinny. Some are stable, like Grimner's been where he's been at for 14 years. Oh, and congratulations on the uh, going out to the field and growing some vegetables. Uh, keep us posted on that. Hopefully you'll take pictures. I did that for Cirque, so you know she could look back and go, Oh, my little things, and look at what they turned into. Wow. And then we could work next year and improve our, on our mistakes of the past year do things and get a better product out of it but the uh, the birds ate the strawberries we, we didn't think ahead for that but like yourself if you know you're going to do something and you have a plan the result will be better me and Cirque just went and did something because <laughs> we're, we're kind of childish like that at our age you know oh well I'm a little older than her but she's 
She's doing her best to catch up. And I think that's a show. And uh, I don't know what time it's. Uh, yeah, I got a few minutes left. So I'm done here with the In a Perfect World uh, podcast. I think I'm over my little uh, mis- uh, misunderstanding with Vincent because me and Vinny have been friends for a long time. So, you know, probably I'll, I'll I'll ask him nicely if he'll come help me do In a Perfect World and we can do it the way we thought of doing it in the first place. And with that, I'll say we have coming up during the week. This is Tuesday night. Tomorrow we'll have Grammy Mary on a rocket chair and Friday. And that will be 6 o'clock on uh, East Coast time. I'm pretty sure I've got this one, right? And on Thursday night, I do 20% off. It's my midnight show, which is 6 o'clock on the East Coast. If you follow the show or whatever, if you don't, you can catch it on a rerun. Grimner makes sure that we're available. And I got a little bit of a following on uh, BitChute, you know, so it gives me, you know, gives me that confidence that what I think, even though it's not popular, that there's other people that aren't looking to be popular, they're looking to be right. They want to know what the fuck is going on, and it's a hard thing to deal with. Anyway, so I'll be back on Thursday to do that. Now, Friday, Grammy Mary at 6, and a rocket chair, and then after that, Grimner and Moose Girl, Moose Girl and Grimner, they do the uh, Freaker's Ball, and then Saturday, I come back on uh, noon my time, or 6 o'clock my, my time, noon Eastern, uh, with the Dork Table, where, I don't know, you can do anything from read links to tell terrible jokes, anything's possible at the dork table. There's no rules. There's no format. I Sometimes people come and visit and yak with me about shit. Hold the hostage. Anything can happen. And uh, then Sunday, we got Grimner opens up with the blues in the morning. And then we got some trivia. Then after that, Hal Anthony, 3 o'clock on the Pacific Coast, comes on with Behind the Woodshed. Okay, then Monday, Grim, Grimner has his new show. I've been miss saying this. Grim Leftovers, not Grimm's. I wasn't clear on that, but yeah, I get it. I get the point. But because I know you, it's Grimm's in my mind, so I have to consciously remember now that it's Grim Leftovers. <laughs> it's, it's a good show. I got a kick out of you. Anyway, and uh, with that, I'm going to Roger Wilco over and out and do the the final touches on the In a Perfect World podcast and get Grimmy some notes. Uh, (laughs) Anti. Okay, well, Roger Wilco over... Let me get my mouse over here so I can do this, right? Boy, this is a long ending. See ya.